It's late afternoon, and once again, he's on the trail of the fabled bull sharks. At last. But what will this quarter-ton tough guy make of our fiberglass weekly? The bull sharks seem unmoved by our spy's presence. Again, perhaps they're not fooled. In any case, they're just about to get their daily feed. That's why they've gathered in the shallows. Gary Ankinson has been feeding bull sharks for more than 10 years. He knows them individually, believes they have their own personalities, and that they recognize him too. It's a unique chance to study bull shark intelligence and try to unravel what triggers the rare attacks on humans. It looks like Robo Shark is in for a rough ride. Robo Shark calls timeout. Meanwhile, shark scientist Eric Ritter enters the water to put his theories to the test. Eric believes attacks on humans are more likely to be accidental or warning than predatory. The shark's behavior here seems to support his case. Even with food just centimeters from his feet, they don't attack. Eric believes this is because they usually need three cues to prompt a bite. The right smell, sight, and sound. Despite being surrounded by the smell of food, Erich doesn't look or sound like a good meal. In fact, he seems to be more in the way than anything. So confident the sharks won't bite, he ups the stakes by producing factor two, sound. When swimming, we generate a low frequency noise similar to a struggling fish that might whet the shark's appetite. But Eric is still confident because the third factor, the water visibility, is good. If this was murky water, a flash of his white leg might look like a fish underbelly and cause an attack. Eric has been doing this for 12 years and was bitten for the first time just last year when swimming in murky water. But it does seem in general that these sharks are smart enough to be cautious of our strange form and can distinguish us from natural prey. 